Wood bison once ranged across northwestern Canada and large regions in interior and south central Alaska. By 1900, the wood bison population was diminished to approximately 400 bison in Canada. Through conservation efforts and management in Canada, the population of wood bison has grown to over 5,000 disease-free animals in seven free-ranging herds with a total of about 11,000 animals in the wild. The state of Alaska has developed a wood bison restoration program with the goal of reintroducing wood bison to their native range in Alaska. Once again, the largest land mammal in North America, giants that stand six feet at the shoulder and are 10 feet long and weigh between 1,200 and 2,500 pounds will return to the Alaskan wild. Welcome, my name is Ali DePew, and today I am here on behalf of our partners, the Alaska Wildlife Conservation Center, Bear Trust International, and Inspired Classroom, to introduce you to a very special animal native to the Alaskan landscape. Throughout a series of lessons, you will use real-world data collected by the Alaska Department of Fish and Game to determine where on the Alaskan landscape a captive herd of wood bison can be restored. You'll also have the opportunity to explore wood bison behavior by watching video clips of wood bison, and you'll learn the difference between wood bison and other ungulate species with a lesson on natural history. Wood bison have played an important role in the Alaskan landscape, both ecologically and culturally. They are a species that can have a profound effect on the habitat. In fact, wood bison help create a healthy habitat. You will learn more about this during the first lesson of the curriculum. But first, I want to share with you a short video about a herd of bison at the Alaska Wildlife Conservation Center. From a small herd in western Canada, a group of 50 wood bison were brought to the Alaska Wildlife Conservation Center in 2008. Through careful management, this rare animal is on the rebound. The wood bison kept at the center in partnership with the state of Alaska now number over 100 and continue to thrive under the care of the center's staff. They'll be released into the wild and once again roam their native lands. This is one of the most significant conservation efforts in North America. The Alaska Wildlife Conservation Center is proud to be a part of this historical event. Very soon, wood bison will be restored back to the Alaskan wild. We want to celebrate this historic event and give you the opportunity to become ambassadors for this amazing animal species. STEM-based lesson in this curriculum, you will work in science teams to determine where the bison should be released. Behind me, you will see a map of potential release sites. You will be given the data collected by wood bison biologists and use this data to discover that not all six sites are suitable for restoring wood bison. You may also have the opportunity to participate in two extension lessons. During the first, you will go outside and collect habitat data along a transect just like wood bison biologists. Or you may have the opportunity to use this data that you have gathered about habitat and food sources to determine how much food a wood bison requires to survive. During the second STEM lesson, we will focus on wood bison behavior. Can you identify 10 different bison behaviors that are happening during this video? Don't worry. After the second lesson, you will be able not only to identify, but you will also learn about these behaviors through a series of games and video clips. What is an ungulate? And how do you identify characteristics that classify an animal as an ungulate? The third STEM lesson will involve investigative work as you compare track sizes, habitat, food sources, and native home ranges of elk, moose, black-tailed deer, caribou, and wood bison. Your job will be to search for any potential conflicts between the animals after the wood bison are restored in Alaska. Through these lessons, you will explore wood bison from the perspective of a scientist. We also need to understand the cultural importance of the wood bison, especially to the Athabascan people of Alaska. 
Athabascan people relied on the wood bison for food, tools, and clothing. The following is a recording of the Gwich'in word for wood bison by Rochelle Adams from the villages of Fort Yukon and Beaver, Alaska. Rochelle made these recordings in honor of her grandfather, Clifford Adams Sr., who was an advocate for wood bison returning to the Alaskan landscape. Now we have accounts of wood bison from Athabascan native elders. Reverend David Salmon said the wood bison were an important source of food on the Yukon Flats. They lived on it, especially before moose became more common. Mosquitoes did not bother wood bison because of their long hair. Wood bison were said to be a good animal, providing valuable food and material for the people. Athabascan people relied extensively on their highly developed archery to take bison and other large animals. Mrs. Annie James of Fort Yukon recognized a picture of wood bison and said her mother, grandfather, and other old timers told stories about the bison in the Fort Yukon area and in the upper Mackenzie River area in Canada. They were hunted in Alaska during the skin clothes days. She recounts that there were lots of wood bison and that they were hunted with bows and arrows and spears. The meat was sometimes dried and was sometimes tough. Mr. Moose Crookshanks of Beaver so there were many stories describing how bison inhabited the Yukon Flats in the old days when big herds of these animals occurred in the area. Large numbers of bison were sometimes killed in the fall when much of the meat was dried and used all winter long. There was a mountain that they referred to as Buffalo Shirt Mountain and had a large herd of bison that came through and would cover the mountain just like a shirt covers a man. Mrs. Mary Sam, also a beaver, said that when she was about nine years old, her grandparents told stories describing how bison were once abundant in the Black River country. She was told the animal had small horns, a big hump, short legs, long hair, and were hunted with a bow and arrow. She remembers that on one occasion, her grandparents pointed to another young girl, saying, when this young girl grows up and her children grow up, then the bison will come back. We need your help as an ambassador to help study and understand these animals. So through conservation and management, your great-great-grandchildren will see this magnificent animal roam free.